السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما صليت على آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى أزواجه وذريته كما باركت على آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Dear brothers and sisters much of the month of Shawwal has passed and we are still, inshallah, carrying with us the spirit of Ramadan and we are still reaping the fruits and the benefits from the month of Ramadan. The month of Shawwal, there is one week left of it. Those who did not fast the six days of Shawwal, I highly encourage you to get this opportunity to take and seize this opportunity and fast those days as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the one who fasted Ramadan man sama Ramadan wa atba'ahu sittan min shawwal and followed it by six days fasting six days of shawwal fakannama sama al-dahr it's as if he fasted forever uh, something like this aw kama qal alayhi as-salatu was salam he said that alayhi as-salatu was salam these are days that will uh, shortly finish and end. And we should try to do whatever we can in those days, especially when we get opportunities 
as they say, ghanimatun barida, a cool prey, uh, something that you can get and not much really effort to do after fasting 30 days or 29 days in Ramadan. It is definitely, inshallah, it should be easy to fast six more days. Those six days are not a must. They are not obligatory to fast. But then, if you have the opportunity to do it, then do it and don't delay that. You still have a chance to catch up with those days. If you fasted some of them, then don't uh, deprive yourself. Don't deprive yourself from the goodness of the khair, the uh, reward of these days. Today's topic is still having to do with the month of Ramadan. It is a sensitive and emotional topic. I wish I did not have to talk about it, but then from the different questions and the different you know, talks and emails and discussions that happen every year, uh, I thought I have to talk about it. But an introduction before that is to mention the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that is in the Sahih of Al Imam Muslim. That after the battle of Al Ahzab, after the battle of Al Ahzab, Rasulullah sallallahu when he left from that battle, he said to the Muslim, "Let no one amongst you pray Zuhr, in one narration Asr, except at the place where Bani Quraida are. Bani Quraida was a tribe from the Jews who betrayed the covenant or the agreement with the Prophet sallallahu So then." he said to go there, to their location. So the companions, they went towards Bani Quraida. But on the way, they were afraid that they will miss the Salah. تَخَوَّفَ نَاسٌ فَوْتَ الْوَقْتِ فَصَلَّوْ دُونَ Bani Quraida. Those who feared that they will miss the time of Salah, they prayed on the way before reaching Bani Quraida. The others, they said, we are not going to pray except at the place where Rasulullah commanded us to pray. Even if we miss the time, the narrator Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, this is in Sahih Muslim and in other books of hadith also, he said, Rasulullah did not scold, did not blame, did not scorn any of the two groups. Although it is a matter dealing with something that is very important, that is missing the time of Salah. Right? But then each group understood something. The first group, they said, and this is the majority of the Ummah afterwards, they understood that he wanted us to rush and not to delay. But he didn't mean for us to miss the time of Salah. Everybody knows we have to pray on time. He wanted us to rush and not to delay and slacken. The other group, which is the minority within the Ummah, they understood that we're going to pray right there. That's how they understood it. Rasulullah did not scorn or scold or blame any of the two groups. Another occasion that was in the time of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu wa ardahu fil jannah. He prayed in Mina, he prayed in Mina four rak'at. He prayed in Mina four rak'at, time of Hajj. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu wa ardahu fil jannah, he didn't like this. Uthman was the Imam radiallahu anhu. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said that he prayed with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and with Abu Bakr and with Umar radiallahu anhu, he prayed two rak'at in Mina because they were travelers and they were there. So they prayed two rak'at. And Uthman also in the beginning, he used to pray two rak'at, but then for some reason, and there are different ex uh, explanations as to why he started praying for. Anyhow, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he didn't like that. But يعني, he still, when he prayed, he prayed for rak'at. He did not shorten the prayer as he prayed with Rasulullah Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum. 
He prayed like he prayed with, he, like Uthman prayed, the leader of the people. And when he was told, they said, ala Uthman, arba'an. You criticized Uthman, then you prayed for. He answered, Al Khilafu Sharr. This is with an authentic chain as a statement of Abdullah bin Mas'ud. He said, This agreement, differing, is evil. Differing is evil. So he didn't want to be different from Amirul Mu'mineen, the leader, the prince of the believers. Al Imam al Shafi'i, alayhi rahmatullah, it is attributed to him a statement that says, Qawli sawab yahtamilu al khata' wa qawlu ghayri khata' yahtamilu al sawab. My statement or my position that I take is correct. And it is possible that it will be incorrect. The position of those other than me, the other position of those who differ with me, it is wrong, in my view, it is wrong, but it is possible for it to be correct. Here, Al Imam al Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he is not like the modernists of nowadays who think that everything is fine, the statements of everyone is okay. Voice your opinion, Akhi. Say what you want, it's okay. Religion, the religion of Allah is not up to anyone or any Yahoo to say anything about it. He does not mean that definitely. As he is the one who also is reported to have said, المسلمون, the Muslims have unanimously agreed that the one to whom the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, becomes crystal clear that that he cannot leave the clear, crystal clear sunnah to the statement or the position of anyone of the people. But then you want to leave room because you might, this is your view today based on the evidence available to you. Maybe tomorrow you will receive more evidence and you will take the other position. And this has happened from the time of the companions to our day of ours. By companions and great imams, great imams. They say this is what we say yesterday, but today we have a different position. We say this today. Because this is more correct. Were they absolutely astray and deviant yesterday, and today they became guided and everybody else astray? It's not like that. Scholars of Islam who are sincere, they put in their effort. If they are right, then Alhamdulillah. If they are wrong, then they see it. Next time, they correct their position. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we have a hadith from the Prophet وسلم, talking about the mujtahid, the scholar, the judge, the ruler. If he puts in his effort, he was correct, then he gets two rewards, meaning the reward of putting the effort and the reward of being correct. If he put in his effort and he was wrong, he still has one reward. One reward for putting the effort because he sincerely tried to do it. So if he did his best and he was wrong, and I remind you of that narration of about Salat al-Dhuhr or Salat al-Asr, let no one pray the prayer except in Bani Quraidah. Those who prayed on the way, they sincerely thought, this, he did not mean for us to miss the Salah. Let's pray here and then continue. The others, they said, no, he said there, then it's there, it's finished. Sincerely, that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu did not blame either of the two groups. So then, if you hold a position, that takes, that's possible, probable. Scholars differ about it. Then you see something that is more correct than الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلِ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ Those who listen to a statement and follow the best of it. If you were wrong to yesterday, you didn't know. Today you got to know. You follow the new information that you have today. This is why also Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, Yunus al-Sadafi, he says about him, ma ra'aytu a'qala min al-Shafi'i. This scholar, he says, I have not seen someone wiser than al-Shafi'i. نظرته يوما في مسألة ثم افترقنا. I debated with him 
one day regarding an issue. Then we parted from each other, departed from each other. وَلَقِيَنِي Then he met him again. فَأَخَذَ بِيَدِي ثُمَّ قَالْ He grabbed me by my hand. Then he said, يَا أَبَا مُوسَى This is the kunya of Yunus al-Sadafi. O Abu Musa, أَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ أَنْ نَكُونَ إِخْوَانًا وَإِنْ لَمْ نَتَّفِقْ فِي مَسْأَلَةً أَلَا يَسْتَقِيمُ Can it not be okay? Can it not be okay? That we will be still brothers even if we do not agree on an issue? Can we not be brothers even if we disagree on an issue? He says, I have not seen wiser than a shafi After that discussion, still I discuss with you, I differ with you, but you are still my brother. Even if we disagree. I think maybe most of you knew the issue that I wanted to, inshallah, cover in a very short time. And that is the issue of when to fast, when to break the fast. And it will show up again when Eid al-Adha comes. And I have been for the past years, like several years, seven or eight or nine or maybe ten years, we are in this masjid for 11 years. And I remember since the beginning, I was saying, we are following this. This is what we believe to be correct. Please do not fight with the others. And let those leaders of the community handle this. If you want to advise them, advise them. By all means. But then don't make this an issue for the public. And I say to you, my neighbor, you are wrong. You tell me I'm right. Uh, the, the son of the uh, family member, relative, he says you're wrong. And uh, my son tells him you are right and, and so on and so forth. Talking and then starting to backbite one another. Bringing down each other. Like uh, as if those, the people of, they have, their religion is, is, is low. You know, you have thumbs up and thumbs down. You know, you are with us or you are not. This is not the way to handle this issue. But then it was difficult to convey this message. And there are people who are putting gas, you know, fuel to the fire. They want it to go on. Because sometimes you don't get what you want except if you do that. When you make trouble, people, you know, listen to you more. Those who are trying to put it down, they think oh, they are weak or their position is weak. When... It, it, it is not necessarily so. Anyhow, all of you know many a hadith about this subject. Fast when you see it, break the fast when you see it. after you it. Do not fast until you see it. Do not break fast until you see it. لا تصوم حتى ترى لا تفطر حتى ترى. So it is based on the moon sighting. There is the hadith of Ibn Abbas, his statement in Sahih Muslim that his mawla, Qurayb, he was sent by Umm al-Fadl, radiallahu anha. He was sent from Medina to Asham, Damascus. He saw the new moon on Friday. He saw the new moon on Friday, him and the others, and Muawiyah, radiallahu anhu, the leader in that time. So they started fasting Saturday. Then he got back to al Medina during the month of Ramadan. He arrived in Medina. And he mentioned to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that they saw the new moon and they fasted Saturday. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, but we did not see it, so we fasted the next day because they did not see the new moon. Quraib said, aren't you going to take the sighting of the people of Sham? He said, no. هكذا أمرنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. No, this is what رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded us. What did رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم command? Many people understand from this hadith that he commanded every people have their own sighting. Every people have their own sighting. If you look all of the books of hadith, you will not find a hadith like that. This is the understanding of some scholars. Ibn Abbas himself عنه, is one of the narrators of Sumu li ru'yati wa aftri li ru'yati. So this is how Rasulullah commanded us, meaning fast when you see it, break the fast when you see it. 
especially in this case where from Dimashq to Al Madina, if the people of Dimashq now see the new moon of Shawwal, this news cannot reach Al Madina in due time. So it's not usable information. It is not usable information. This is Allah knows best the meaning of this narration. We should understand also that fasting is a ibadah that is a group ibadah, not one individual fasts or two people. It's a group ibadah. Rasulullah says, As-Sawm yawma tasumun wal-fitr yawma tuftirun wal-adha yawma tudahun. This is in the Sunan of At-Tirmidhi and the meaning of this as Al-Imam At-Tirmidhi put that As-Sawm ma'a al-jama'ah wa'udhm al-nas. You fast with the Jama'ah with the group and the majority of the people, the great numbers of the people. In another narration, Fitrukum Yawma Tuftirun, Wadhakum, Wadhakum Yawma Tudahun, Wa'arafa Yawma Tu'arifun. Breaking the fast is the day when you break the fast as a nation, as a group. And the Adha is the day when you sacrifice. And Arafa, the day of Arafa, is the day when you to Arifun, when you go to Arafah. That is the day of Arafah. Right? So, you do not fast on your own and break fast on your own. لا. You fast and break fast with the Jama'ah. So, this is the case. And in a nutshell, the scholars, there are, amongst them are those who said that if some Muslims see the new moon anywhere, then it is binding on the rest to follow that sighting for breaking the fast or for fasting. This is the majority of the scholars, including Al Imam Abu Hanifa, alayhi rahmatullah, Imam Malik, alayhi rahmatullah, Imam, uh, Imam Ahmad, alayhi rahmatullah. Imam Al Shafi'i had a position which says every people of a certain location or certain area, if they are close to each other, in a way that they their sighting of the moon is the same, then they should be together. The rest uh, of the Imams, they said one sighting is good for all. The moon, it is born once for the whole world. But then it may be seen in this location, it might not be seen in the other location. This is, this is the issue, right? So now we, if we see the new moon, then we fast. If we uh, uh, see the new moon, then we break the fast. This is how uh, it should be done according to the majority of the scholars. Then nowadays there came what is uh, called hisab or the astronomy, astronomical calculations. This was not an issue a long time ago. It appeared and it came up, but then it was not acted upon, what it was acted upon just in this time of uh, ours. So Allah knows best, the issue of different people have different sightings. It is a reality that the moon might show up in this area and might not show up in the, the other one. That's established. But then this sh should this be given weight or not? And I did mention several years ago, and I will mention it again. If we are in a place like Ontario, you go from Toronto, is Brampton the same sighting? Maybe it's close, so same sighting. What about London, Ontario? Is it the same sighting? Some might say, oh, it's two hours away, drive, you know, many kilometers. Maybe it's not. Some of us might say, well, it is. Okay, let's include London. You go further west to Windsor. You include it or you don't include it? Well, maybe you say, well, let's include it. Now, well, what about Detroit? Detroit is closer to Windsor than Windsor to Toronto. And this is the way. Wherever you say this is the end of it, I tell you what, the neighboring country is closer to it. Where does it end? Where does it end? It does not end. This is a position that is conflicting within itself. It was a valid position before that, uh, or a, a, a position that uh, the time necessitated that because you cannot 
convey the information of sighting the moon, except when you cannot use it anymore. The time has gone. After a week or two weeks, they tell you, oh, the, the new moon was sighted. And you cannot use that. You have to use what you have, right? Nowadays, uh, the information can travel faster. And this is why, you know, there is a position that taken by some. And that is, they consider whole North America to be one sighting. And not only North America, North and South America, one sighting. So big of an area. If you remember Dimashq, Damascus, and Medina, Abdullah bin Abbas considered them, radiallahu anh, different locations. So if you are using that hadith, how can you use a North and South America, different, very big space, you use one sighting for it? What about the other locations? I was saying the eastern part of Canada is closer to Europe than California. How is it that you make them fast with California when they are closer to Europe? That's why after Hilal Committee, they branched off now Crescent Committee, which is based on one sighting for the whole world. Because they have seen that these this parameters that they have, that they set up, is only arbitrary. It's not, and it's not, it's a new thing. It's not the madhab of any imam. Not even Imam Abu Hanifa, alayhi rahmatullah, or the late scholars of the madhab, Al Hanafi. To have this big space, maybe they say okay because they want the people to be on one thing, but then as uh, it being different sightings or ikhtilaful matali, this is a very big area that cannot be uh, taken as just one. The people of the same position, they might have different endings, different conclusions. Like those who say one sighting, right? But then they might only take the sighting of Mecca and Medina. They will not take the sighting of, for instance, Yemen, like last year. Like last year, Yemen, they sighted the new moon of Ramadan. They started, we started here because we go with the one sighting. And it was officially in the legal Islamic court system that sighting was accepted. So we followed it, right? But some might not use that. Even those who take North America and South America as one sighting, as you notice this Eid, Eid al-Fitr, they differed. As the Hilal of Committee of Chicago, they accepted a sighting that was in California. The rest who are upon the same position, they did not accept that. So once again, who is right, who is wrong? And taking it further, as some people think just that way, who's in the fire and who's in paradise? Wal'iyadu billah. People on the same thing and they are different. Even the people who follow the calculations saying that today it's the science, we have to follow science, this will unite us. They have different ways of using this science. Some of them they will say, as the uh, North America, you know, part of them, they say that the Fiqh Council of North America, they say if the new moon is born in Mecca time before sunset and it does not set afterwards in a way that it can be seen, then the next day is the new day of the month. So they only uh, limit that to Mecca. What if the new moon is born uh, and uh, it is uh, before sunset in United States or Canada? Why don't they accept that? The others they said, like the European Council, if it is possible for it to be sighted anywhere in the world this day, then tomorrow is the new day of the month. And some even, they will use, even if the new moon is born maybe minutes before dawn of the next day, then the next day is the new month. Even the people who follow calculations, they are not on one and the same ground. They don't reach one conclusion in the end. So where, what do we do with this? Where do we end? This is an issue 
that we need to try to find a solution for it. But the solution is not by muscles or pressure, putting pressure, intellectual terrorism. Follow this or you are that. And they call you names and he is with this, he is with that. And they start using things that are not suitable to be used. And Allah is al mustaan From Allah alone we seek the help. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum. الحمد لله رب العالمين قيوم السماوات والأرضين مدبر الخلائق أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن شاء الله في ميك روم فور ذا براذرز وار ستاندينغ إن ذا باك سو we have those different positions taken by different organizations or before that by scholars. So if the issue is a matter of ijtihad where it is a give and take, then if someone sincerely took the position that he believes it to be the correct one, inshallah we say that inshallah you follow that and the reward is with Allah. Sincerity and knowledge based on knowledge and sincerity. It is not for ignorant people to say we put our effort, it's for people who are knowledgeable. And then if that is the case, we should not fighting and busying ourselves by attacking each other. I already said many times, it is already bad enough that we differed about Ramadan and the Eid. Difference is not good, we want to be one and the same. But then let's not make it far worse by pointing fingers and attacking one another. And we do our very best to unite and without being pressuring each other or forcing one another or labeling one another, calling each other's, uh, 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 each other names. So this is uh, the case. And I remind you again of the position that we are taking. It is that one sighting wherever it is cited it is to be followed it is one moon if the Muslims have seen it then it has been cited start fasting provided that the information reach you, reaches you in due time so fast when you see it break the fast when you see it and we should accept the citing from any people any people who are Muslims and that sighting has to be a confirmed, established sighting, not just a say of somebody. It has to be legally accepted as a uh, sighting. This way will uh, bring uh, the differences uh, down. There are things that are not within our means. We cannot force the others. So then we do what we believe to be the correct position. And uh, Allah knows best. There is much to be said regarding this issue. But then I hope I conveyed uh, something that is sufficient for us to use. And the conclusion of that is that this is a matter that is supposed to be left to the administrators of the mosques, the scholars who run these uh, centers. They are the ones who uh, make a decision. And then the rest of the people, they follow uh, what they believe to be correct. Uh, of that or they follow the person or the scholar they feel is more knowledgeable uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen up until those things are fixed this is the way otherwise the other way is to just fight and bicker and this is not uh, serving anyone anything it just makes us feel bad and makes us look bad to the others rather what we should do is Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom, and beautiful admonishment, and argue with them, discuss with them, with that, which with a way that is the best. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit all of us from what we heard, to make us from a people who listen 
to a statement and follow the best of it. Allahumma ahfadna bil islami qaimin, wa ahfadna bil islami qaidin, wa ahfadna bil islami raqidin, wa la tushmit bina a'da'an hasidin. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min kulli khayrin, khazainuhu biyadik, wa na'udhu bika min kulli sharrin, khazainuhu biyadik. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا فنضل اللهم من كان من أمة محمد على غير الحق وهو يظن أنه على الحق فرده اللهم إلى الحق ليكون من أهل الحق This is a dua attributed to الإمام أحمد Ibn Hanbal alayhi rahmatullah the imam of Ahl al-Sunnah O oh Allah the one whom from the Ummah of Muhammad who is not upon the truth and he thinks he is upon the truth O oh Allah bring him back to the truth so that he will be from the people of the truth Allahumma man kana min ummati Muhammadin ala ghayri al-haq faruddahu Allahumma ila al-haq liyakuna min ahli al-haq so that he will be from the people of truth this is what we should have in our hearts for the others, not wanting them to go on with their whatever they are upon until they are doomed and destroyed. Waliyadu billah. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma arham al mustadafina min al mu'minin. Allahumma adhilhum mudhala sidq wa akhrijhum mukhraja sidq. وجعلهم من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم عليك بظالميهم فإنهم لا يعجزونك اللهم أحصهم عددا واقتلهم بددا ولا تغادر منهم أحدا ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولمن له حق علينا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة